The following is a presentation of TFNN. Live at TFNN, the Money Masters. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, the Money Masters. Good day, Money Masters and Treasure Hunters. Welcome to the April 24th, terrific Thursday edition of the Money Masters show. I'm your host, Steve Rhodes, and I absolutely treasure your presence here today. My outcome, as always, is to help you to become a better Money Master and to provide you with the tools that empower human potential. Because living up to our potential, folks, that's something you and I, we must master each and every day. So let's begin our day with empowering beliefs. These beliefs brought to us by our extraordinary producer, Al. He's the one that makes everything seem so seamless for each of us contributors here. And I know that that is not the case. Al starts his day with the following incantation, and you should too. He starts off his day by saying, watch your thoughts, for they become words. Watch your words, for they become actions. Watch your actions, for they become habits. Watch your habits, for they become your character. And watch your character, for it becomes your destiny. Let's go check out the destiny in the markets here. Right now, we've got a, a big reversal day that is uh, in place as we speak right now. Dow is off 37 points. It's trading out at 16,464. S&P is down 3 points, trading at 1872. NASDAQ composite down 13 points right now, trading out at 41. 113. Russell 2000 lead the charge on the way down, down nine tenths of a percent. It's off nine dollars and change. Apple's up 37 bucks. Microsoft back 32 cents. Google's off four dollars. Cisco down 10 pennies. Apple leading the charge. The upside. Zimmer Holdings just behind them up 14 percent. ZMH is the ticker symbol. That's up 13 dollars. Looks like uh, they were out with uh, earnings. Of course, we had earnings all over the place. They had net income of two hundred twenty-one million versus two eighteen. EQT Research that's up five bucks, four dollars and seventy cents, up four and a half percent. Lamb Research L R C X up eight percent out here. Citrix Systems up uh, four dollars, about seven percent. Aetna up five uh, percent, up three dollars. Uh, Group One Automotive it's up six uh, percent, up three dollars and change. To the downside, Biogen as the uh, culprit out here. BIIB, it's off 18%, down about 6%. Core Laboratories, down $19 now, down about 9%. Netflix off 17 bucks, down 5%. Priceline, down about $14, off 1%. Carbo Ceramics, CRR, off 9%, down $12. Uh, Silicon Limited, SILC, down 10 bucks, about 17%. Uh, LinkedIn, off $9. Regenerate Pharmaceuticals, down 8 uh, CoStar Group, down 8 Celgene, off about about eight. So we got a lot of eights, a lot of eighteens, a lot of tens and twelves. Our call number is eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. Give me a call, folks. Let's take a look at the New York Stock Exchange first. Let's go see what we have out here. Let me also pull up something else uh, while I'm doing this here. Let me pull up the uh, newsletter. I just want to see net it, net declining issues, a key number to be watching uh, today. New York Stock Exchange, summation index up. Uh, oscillators are above zero. 1,176 is the number to be watching at today's close. If we see net declining issues above 1,176, we're only at 568 right now, that would go ahead and give the ball back to the uh, Bears. Otherwise, at this stage, we may just be seeing a pullback, of course, volatile volume, a retracement, which you would expect after the number of up sessions that we have had here over the course of the last six and seven days out here. So we'll be tracking volume, most certainly as we take a look at the end of the session. When it comes to New York Stock Exchange, you want to be taking a look at that number, 1176 or more. We're only at 578 right now. That would uh, signal at least a, in the case of the New York Stock Exchange, that would signal coming at least all the way back to the breakout of April the 15th out here, where it formed that hammer candle right around the 10 thousand four oh seven area right now you're ten thousand five thirty six retracement wise from the low to the high out here most recent low uh, to the high that was out here on April 22nd. Dead cat bounce would take you to 10, 487. As I said, right now you're about 10,540. Let's go take a look at the other indexes here. Let's take a look at the S&P, the Dow see what they are doing so if we take a look at the uh, Dow not a ton of damage here just yet why do I say not a ton of damage well inside the index itself 
itself still trading with inside the body of the candle here from April 22nd. This is where we're going to take a look at the futures contract versus the index to kind of get a gauge as to what is going on inside the market. So the Dow also still trading inside the swing point here from April the 4th. And that low is 16,392.77. If it gets below that, if it gets below that today, that sends off a different message out here as it is testing that swing point, has not tested the high of that swing point, which, by the way, is at 16,631.63 out here. So the number on the Dow to be looking for or watching is at 16,392.77. If we take a look at retracements, take a look. It's been a nice, strong move off of the uh, bottom out here. You cannot expect it to go up forever. You Got to expect retracements uh, to uh, to come into being, and now it's a matter of being able to measure what that selling pressure, what that retracement is like. Thirteen, uh, I'm sorry, not thirteen, but sixteen three fifty five. That is your dead cat bounce. That's your point three eight two retracement area. That should be expected. That would be uh, normal. Maybe not necessarily today, but that would be uh, normal inside the uh, market. Let's go take a look at the. Uh, Oops, didn't mean to do that. Let's go take a look at the S&P 500. S&P 500 right now trading out at 1872. It's uh, back about, uh, what, $3 out here. Uh, so if we take a look at the S&P, uh, take a look at retracements, it says... Uh, also traveling inside its swing point high. So the key area to be watching for in the S&P 500 is going to be, well, let me make that a black line out here. That's going to be the low of the trading session from April the 4th, 1863.26 out there. Otherwise, uh, you know, yeah, well, again, we'll go take a look at the ETF structure and see where it is uh, trading at. If we take a look at retracements from the, uh, if this is a light volume day on the uh, pullback out here, then what that sets up is that sets up the potential of it. A to B equals C D on the upside out here. The uh, dead cat bounce inside the S and P five hundred eighteen fifty seven ninety five. That's twenty. Well, you're at eighteen seventy two right now. Eighteen sixty two fifty two. It's about what eighteen point sixteen seventeen point something like that uh, in the uh, marketplace. Let's go take a look at the uh, N D X one hundred. Let's go see what it is doing. The N D X one hundred right now trading out at thirty five sixty three again. I'm going to switch back and forth. We'll take a look at the. Uh, Futures contract. The futures contract shows it a bit more clearly out here. Right now, the NDX 100 trade out at 35.63. That's with Apple being up a total of uh, 38 uh, points. Of course, Apple being the uh, big dog, weighting-wise, where was that? Russ gave that to me in the uh, Dan. I think it was 11 point some odd percent out there uh, in the... Uh, yeah, I'd have to go back pretty far inside here on my screen. Anyways, Apple's still the number one weighting structure inside of the NDX 100. Uh, it's trading at 35.65 out here. Of course, it was running into, if you take a look at the actual index, it shows what's so interesting here. Really interesting, at least to me. As I, uh, as I, this lines that we're taking a look at that are drawn in here, these lines were drawn in, uh, June 24th low is where I'm looking at the uh, trend line. The low there is 28.25. The uh, next uh, touch point really that I'm in essence using from a trend line standpoint was the uh, low that was put in on February 5th. And that's out at uh, 3418. So that trend here, what's interesting is uh, the NDX 100 broke that trend, broke with conviction absolutely on April the uh, 4th, got below that uh, level, came back up and tested it a couple of trading sessions later, back on April the 9th, rejected it, went ahead and completed. Uh, it's moved down to test the uh, February 5th low out there. And what's so interesting, if you take a look at that trend line versus the channel line that was drawn out here inside the NDX, inside the index itself, that's off of the open session from uh, 3736 to the, uh, we're going to use the open session from April the 3rd out there. That's at 3670, you know, like to the day. Now, price didn't get up and hit that. If it would have hit the uh, 30, that would have even been more of a miracle, I suppose, a miraculous 3624. Uh, but right to the day, you know, kind of running into resistance. So, And that's the whole key with regard to what we're seeing, excuse me, inside the uh, market. What we're seeing out here is we're seeing a natural area of resistance, an area where we expected a uh, 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 where we expected the market to find resistance. That's really what I wrote in my uh, newsletter this morning to folks. We we're long the NQ. We had a long position in uh, Facebook. Uh, uh, that we had taken. We've now been stopped out of that for profits. Some folks I know took uh, profits early in the uh, pre-market out there. 
And the reason when we take a look at uh, Apple is running into uh, certainly resistance, we'll take a look at those areas. I'll switch back over into the uh, futures uh, contract out here into the NQ, and we'll take a look at the uh, descending price channel that it is uh, traveling within. So if we take a look at that, number one, what we saw here this morning was we saw price get all the way up and test the uh, .786 retracement level. That .786 retracement level is coming from the swing point high April the 3rd, that level's out at 36.69, down to the uh, low of that hammer candle out here, and that is on April 15th. That low is 34.04.75, so it makes a .786 retracement, not exactly, but really right around there. 36.13, uh, 36.12.50 uh, actually gets up to 36.18 out here. Uh, runs right into that descending price channel, and that's really what is going to be key for us to be watching. Look. Anything can happen. It is early in the uh, trading session. We've seen the bears at this stage here, in essence, right from the open, uh, throw the uh, best that they could at the market. Uh, we'll see what the uh, bulls here want to do next. Now, we've had uh, trading sessions to the upside. We've had uh, beginning with the trading session from uh, April the uh, 14th. That's when my clients and I actually took a long position inside of the NQ. So we've had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven up trading sessions in a row. You cannot expect that a uh, market, especially a market that has been beating, been beaten down like this, to uh, have seven up trading sessions in a row and uh, not uh, go ahead and uh, pull back a, a bit out here. So we'll see. Now let's take a look at retracement levels from the uh, low to the high out here. Let's do just the opposite. Let's come from the uh, low out here on the trading session from April the 15th out to the high that was put in today. And what is important now is that uh, today... Uh, right now, if you were to see a lower close, any lower close inside the uh, uh, NQ out here actually forms a key potential. It's a key, we'll call it a key reversal day. Whether it's a key reversal session or not, you know, it to a certain extent, it really doesn't qualify. And why doesn't it uh, qualify? Well, it doesn't qualify because you're really not coming from an extended condition. You know, an extended condition would be something like where you go ahead and you make an A to B equals CD to the uh, upside or the downside or where the relative strength indicator is up towards the 70 level or down towards the uh, 30 uh, level out there. And we really don't have that. But we do certainly have a, uh, a, uh, an outside uh, day out here, and that's where the, uh, where the high and the low of the previous day uh, have already been exceeded on both sides and any lower close out there. So, look... The point that I really want to make is that prices come up and it's hit an area, a natural area of where you would expect it. Look, we're technical traders. If you're a technical trader, you're looking at this pattern and saying, even when we went long, so if you were to go back and take a look at my newsletter on April 14th, uh, when we went long, we said, hey, our target, what we're looking for is we're looking to go short as price is coming into the uh, top of that uh, descending price channel out there. Didn't think we would hit it in a straight line, uh, but we absolutely did hit it in a straight line out here. You know, my interpretation of the uh, market as we speak right now with the uh, New York Stock Exchange being the wider swath yesterday, uh, it was uh, yesterday, the day before, it's making uh, all-time high, it's net advancing uh, issues out there. It's advanced decline line is at all-time highs out there. Folks, that's not what you typically see in a bearish market. That is what you see in a bullish market out there. The wider swath of the market, the New York Stock Exchange. Looks like maybe it's saying, no, 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 not so fast. 877-927-6648. We'll be right back, folks. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. 
Wouldn't it be great if you could get a red light, green light indicator that gives you signals on 25 different future contracts? Now you can with Taz Signal Box. This red light, green light market profile system dynamically updates 24 hours a day and provides you with important trend and trade signals on nine different commodities, nine different indices, and eight different currencies. Right now, you can receive a free two-week trial to Taz Signal Box. For all the details and to find out how the Signal Box works, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Andy Heck's powerful weekly newsletter, The Technomental Commodity Report, has delivered multiple triple-digit winning trades in recent months. And right now is the perfect time to get a full month long trial to Andy's newsletter with no obligation to pay anything. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you'll lock in the low rate of only $59 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. You've always taken the long view when it comes to investing, but what if there's an opportunity right under your nose? What if you could be more responsive to market trends to seek to boost your portfolio performance right now while seeking to reduce your overall risk? At Direction Funds, we connect investors with alternative strategies that seek to maximize their returns. Smart investors deserve smart alternatives. Find yours at directionfunds.com. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risk, charges, and expenses of Direction Funds carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Funds. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact the Direction Funds at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. Investing in index funds may be more volatile than investing in broadly diversified funds. Distributed by Rafferty Capital Markets, LLC. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Steve takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Traditionally at 727 445 1044. Welcome back, folks. Uh, let me uh, show you one of the things. I shared this with the clients uh, yesterday. It's it's one of the reasons that uh, I still have a, a bullish outlook on the uh, market out here. Let me go ahead and expand it out. Now, i got to show you yesterday's chart. If I try to put today's chart, I've had to basically shut most things down here. I've been adding a number of tools on my uh, system out here. And in the last couple of days, as the market has opened, things have just bogged down. And uh, today, things came to an absolute uh, standstill, which is not a fun thing when you're doing a, a live radio show out here. So I've had to shut a number of things down, and we'll continue to tweak the uh, system to avoid that. And so uh, in any event, what we're looking at here, we're looking at the New York Stock Exchange. Now, the bottom portion of the chart here, this shows what the advanced decline line uh, looks like. Now, this was through... Now, yes, it was through the uh, day before out here. And uh, bearish markets don't have this pattern out here, typically. Like anything, can, like I can't control what uh, takes place next in the market. What I can do, though, is I can go ahead and read enough of these signals out here to say, okay, if you step back and you get rid of all of your biases, are these patterns that are associated with a bullish or bearish market? So when you take a look at the wider swath of the market, when you take a look at the New York Stock Exchange, if somebody can show me a bearish market that has this pattern, then, then send that to me, and let's go ahead and take a look at it. But what I'll tell you is that uh, this is the sign of a bullish market out here. And then when you put that together with the uh, with that uh, V-shaped uh, that V-shaped bottom that we have seen coming up off of the uh, lows out here from April uh, 15th, 
inside of the uh, NASDAQ, which has been the uh, weak link out here. The expectation should be, when you get up to resistance, that, you know, it's just like when you try to break through in life. Usually you don't get it on your uh, first hit out there. And that's really what it is that we are most certainly seeing inside of the uh, NQ right now. And that's a lead dog, right? It's led things on the way up. It's led things on the way down out here. And we really want to watch what happens when it comes into that resistance uh, level. Inside of the New York Stock Exchange, you know, we let off the show taking a look at uh, that out here. If we take a look at a, a different time frame, let me switch to a different chart inside the wider swath of the uh, marketplace out here. So let's go take a look at that. Um, do, 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 give me a moment here. There we go. So we'll pull up the uh, New York Stock Exchange. Let's switch this over to a, a weekly chart out here. Uh, weekly chart shows this on the weekly chart, and this is really important. So on the weekly chart, what we're dealing with here is we're dealing with the uh, uh, we're dealing with the uh, swing point all the way back from October of 2007. If I pull this back even further out here, what you'll see is you're going to see the the 6,000 point consolidation that the New York Stock Exchange is in. The New York Stock Exchange, if you take a look at the lows, I'm coming back now on the weekly chart back in the March of 2003. Makes a low out here of about 45.76. Guess what? In 2009, when the market came uh, crashing uh, down, it made it came all the way back to those uh, same lows out there. So that becomes the uh, lows. Then the high out here is uh, put in in October of 2007 out of the 10,387 level. That an area, in essence, acted as resistance. So here, if I were to draw the consolidation pattern in, the larger consolidation, there's your consolidation pattern. And you know that when you break, so that's the yellow area on my screen. As you know, when you break a consolidation pattern, your move is equal to or greater than the actual consolidation. Now, look, we can do a couple of different things. We could take a look at the New York Stock Exchange, and we can take a look at a couple different consolidation patterns. If I try to pull this back a little bit further, I can make the case here that what occurred really inside the New York Stock Exchange I'm going to do this, so uh, you know, while we're live on the air here. Here is the original consolidation pattern that was inside the New York Stock Exchange. Now, this takes us back, in essence, into 1997. So, 1997, uh, the cons consolidates from somewhere right around the 44, 4200 level, 4260 or so, up to about the uh, 7200 level. So, you got what a, a 3,000 point consolidation. It finally breaks that consolidation level back in 2005, November of 2005. Now, as I move this box to the upside take a look at what it did New York Stock Exchange in essence back at the highs in October of 2007 first it made the highs in July 2007 and it went ahead and it did what it made that consolidation pattern and in, in what we saw here in uh, October was on the uh, weekly chart out here what we saw was a uh, move a little spike higher made a price relative strength divergent pattern gave us a reversal signal it did all of the, the above out there so that is one consolidation pattern that it broke now we've got the larger consolidation inside the New York Stock Exchange so that's how consolidation patterns uh, typically work out there it's why you want to understand what kind of market that you are uh, uh, trading now as we take this back here to where we're at the present time well the October 2007 high which is a price point of 10 387.17 price you can see that acted as resistance back here in January 2014 uh, in fact it got rejected back in February when it had made a low now this is the NYSE this is a weekly chart and of course as it was making a slow the week of February 7th made it with a hammer candle out there the bulls came in and said uh uh no way now take a look at what it's doing. It continues to trade above that consolidation level out here. It's got resistance. It's the shooting star from the weekend of April 4th. We'll be right back, folks. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. 
For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading, and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels, as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex box spreads. TFNN is back with another Tiger Dollar special, and as part of this promotion, not only can you receive up to a 25% bonus on whatever you spend, but you can also gain access to a five-part live webinar series with Tom O'Brien taking place the week of April 28th. Each morning during the week at 8 a.m., Tom O'Brien will walk you through how he sets up the market live and digest the previous day's trading action while analyzing overnight markets abroad in order to anticipate what kind of trading day to expect. Each 60-minute live morning webinar will be archived by around 9.30 a.m. that very morning so that if you can't attend live, it'll be available for your viewing pleasure on demand whenever you're ready. Tiger Dollars can be used for any TFNN newsletter or service and they never expire. So now is a great time to lock in extra savings on all TFNN products. Don't miss out on Tom O'Brien's five-part webinar series. Get your Tiger Dollars today with up to a 25% bonus on whatever you spend before this special is over by visiting TFNN.com. No matter where you listen to TFNN programming, we want you to know you can always access your favorite shows on demand through TFNN.com. TFNN airs live programming every market day from 9 a.m. till 6 p.m. Eastern, and you can view each program by accessing Tiger TV through our homepage. We even have an easy link for all mobile devices, including iPhones and iPads, located at the top right-hand corner of the TFNN homepage. You can use your smartphone to view Tiger TV, but if you don't have a mobile connection that can keep up with streaming live video, then you can simply visit TFNN.mob in the browser of your smartphone for live streaming audio of all of our programs. The mission of TFNN is to educate our audience directly and interactively through our interactive website and radio call and talk shows. TFNN is able to teach all levels of investors the technical skills needed to trade in today's marketplace. In order to get the best information possible, TFNN has assembled the most respected financial minds in the country to provide the most current news and comprehensive advice available. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's off eight. S and P is up about two points. Uh, Nasdaq composite up eight. Uh, Russell two thousand uh, uh, down uh, three points. NDX one hundred up nineteen points right now. So not really the labor the issue, but you know, in order to just uh, if if each of us, and I, and I hope that that includes me too. Uh, if each of us uh, go ahead and we just go ahead and we park our thoughts about what the market is or isn't doing, and we just go read some of the signals out there, and we look for uh, bullish or bearish signs, I, I can promise you this. Other than trying to be a top picker and a bottom picker, meaning trying to sell the top tick or buy the bottom tick, and if and you know if that's what you're trying to do, that's a whole nother skill. Uh, and there I would say, you know, you really want to become a, a master of Fibonacci expansion numbers uh, of A to B equals CD and a real master of money management. Because when you're trying to do that, you're also trying to do that without getting some kind of reversal signal out there. And instead, what we're looking, what I'm trying to do is give you the larger trend uh, signals or patterns that are in place that are confirmed. That's a whole different thing. When you're trying to sell a top tick or buy a bottom tick, you're, you're, there's really no confirmation the market has made its low or it's made its high out there. 
And here when we take a look at the New York Stock Exchange, now I've got one of the Rhodes Momentum Indicator charts on the screen. I'm slowly starting to pull a couple things back into the system out here. And if we take a look at, let's say, the October 2007 highs out here, this is a monthly chart that we've got on my screen, what is uh, typically associated with uh, major highs and major bottoms this isn't always there. Well, there are a number of signals that, that are out there. But typically you'll see a, a price relative strength divergence. And when you're making a high, when the market is making a high, it's typically going to do that one last false exhaustion move to the upside. And what will happen is it will spike to a higher price and it will do with less relative strength out there. And when you see that take place, that's always telling you, that's always a signal that, uh, hey, this move may in fact not be real. Now, you need to wait for it to play out. You need to wait for some type of reversal signal out here. And that's, in essence, what we really got inside the New York Stock Exchange back in October of 2007. It's a bearish engulfing that candle out here. I may have something uh, turned off or in, in an event, but the actual candle session from uh, November in 2007 gave you the confirmation of that reversal signal inside the marketplace. If you go back here into the uh, 2000 and uh, what is this? The what's the date on this uh, session here? This is what uh, September of 2000. As the New York Stock Exchange was making its high, it too. Now this was not a reversal signal out here. You got the reversal signal inside this uh, pattern. This was back inside the uh, February of 2001 time frame when the New York Stock Exchange finally gave its a bearish signal, and you can see that led to a, a market that went ahead and went what? It made a lower low back in the uh, time frame. This is in uh, 2003. This is March of 2003 when prices did what? They went ahead. They made that last exhaustive move to the downside. They did it with what? With uh, less relative weakness, and that set up the uh, move higher into the uh, into the highs. You can see some of these uh, price relative strength divergent patterns that are marked on my chart here on the uh, on the uh, monthly chart. Uh, you know they're not confirmed until you see a reversal signal, and then what you also like to see is you like to see a, a second confirmation of follow through. That's exactly what you had out here in uh, 2007. You had the confirmation signal, and you had follow through during the month of December 2007. So now we roll forward to where we're at inside the. The NYSE right now, and on the NYSE, do you see that signal out here? I don't. We don't. We don't have a price relative strength the signal. Not the way that I take a look at it. And it is a unique way out here, and it's a unique way because I've gone back to uh, identify the parameters that are most associated with significant tops or bottoms, and it works like this on intraday charts as well. And so that's why I went back and I did that kind of work. Now the only thing, and this market here, this month doesn't close until next. Is it Wednesday or Tuesday? It's next week. It's, uh, well, I can tell you, it's on April 30th. I just don't know. It's today's, what, the 20? I guess we probably can figure this out. It's the 24th, so it must be next Wednesday. Next Wednesday that the uh, market that closes for the month. Now, what we do have here in the New York Stock Exchange and, and the S&P 500 and the Dow, and why we have to really keep a uh, pay close attention, is that what we do have is the potential for a, truly for a key reversal session out here. Uh, this is unquestionable because what we have is this month we've exceeded the high and the low of last month. And if, in fact, inside the NYSE, uh, it were to close below this month's open, which is uh, 10,538 that would be your signal. And then if we have follow through and sell in May, and that's the whole thing out here. If you see a lower close the following month, that signals uh, that, you know, we may have a, a fairly decent top in place. Uh, but at the moment, inside the NYSE, we do not have that uh, pattern. If I switch over, we take a look at the S&P 500 right now. So, again, the, you know, you put all this together. We take a look at the advanced decline line on the uh, daily basis. The monthly is saying, hey, yeah, not so fast. I don't see a reversal. The daily, uh, coming off of the uh, low out here, coming off of the low from April 15th, what we have seen inside the New York Stock Exchange, yes, volume has been tepid out here. But, folks, volume has been tepid since 2009. So that's not really anything that is new out here. That's just one element of a, of a stock chart. What we have seen here is what we saw, that first chart that I put on as we were coming back into this uh, break, or it was last break, was the New York Stock Exchange, the advanced decline line, is making new highs. It's, been, it's making new highs, quite frankly, ahead of uh, price making new highs inside the uh, NYSE out there. That is associated with bullish markets. That is not associated with bearish markets. Does that mean that the market can't pull back today? Or No, I, like I say, I can't control what takes place next. I can only read the book, and I'm really good at reading books, and I'm really good at reading uh, and staying in the present. 
You know, with regard to forecasting the future, that's where we use A, B equals CD patterns. We use retracements. We use trend lines and channel lines to understand where battles are going to take place. And then you want to understand is where's the cavalry? You know, where are they hanging out? That's why we use candle confirmations out here. Inside the S&P 500, really the same move. You take a look at the long term out here. There's no way that uh, somebody can uh, um, convince me that this is a, a bearish uh, S&P 500 on a monthly chart. You just get, because it doesn't exist. Is it a potential key reversal session? It absolutely is. Uh, did we make a price relative strength divergence top back here in the S&P 500 in 2007? Yes, we did. We absolutely did out here. We take a look at the, let's go take a look at the, uh, let's go take a look at the weakness again. So let's just stay in the present. Let's take a look at the NDX. Let's take a look at the NDX and the composite out here because they're the weak links. We'll take a look at the Russell as well because, you know, we've got some opposing signals going on out here. But now here's the, here's the NDX 100. And here's a monthly chart. Where's the bearish signal on a monthly chart inside of the NDX 100? And no question, the bears had the better hand going into the April 15th level. I mean, they were able to push price down below what ends up being the eight-period exponential moving average, which is right now at 34.76. But you see this candle formation that's out here right now? Remember, the body of a candle is absolutely the essence of price. The wicks of a candle, the shadows of a candle, they are nothing more than emotion out there. What's really key is the essence of price. What's really key is the body of a candle. And right now, from a monthly standpoint, there's no reversal signal here from a longer-term standpoint when we take a look at the monthly charts for what is supposedly the weakest link in the chain out here. It isn't on the monthly chart. It doesn't show you a weak link on the monthly chart. In fact, quite frankly, if you were next month, in May, sell in May, and I, I sent, I put a, uh, I, you know, I put a, a little comment inside the uh, Tiger's Den yesterday that the uh, CME, I'm on the CME's mailing list, and they sent me an email, and they said that the uh, sell in May is gone, is uh, being canceled for this year out here, and that's in essence what the stock charts are telling me, or at least it's telling me it's not going to start on May first. But again, I don't have an advanced copy edition of what the market is going to do. I'm just going to call the market as I see it right now. And I am willing to change directions as soon as the signals point out. But again, what I'm not trying to do for you is I'm not trying to sell the top tick or buy the bottom tick. What I want you to do is if you get the trend right, if you can get the trend right, then you will absolutely be able to, uh, to stay in good shape and make sure that you stay and you trade with inside the direction of the trend. And if you're trying to s sell a top tick, just please buy for God's sakes, please use stops out there. And anyway, that's what the weekly chart for the NDX 100 is uh, telling us. Let's take a look at the or the monthly chart. Let's take a look at the weekly chart. The weekly chart right now never really got into a bearish position. If we take a look at the Rhodes Momentum Indicator. Now, resistance is in place out here, and this is really key in utilizing my system out here. And that says that uh, this week, if in fact you were to see a close above 3602.35, you actually get a buy signal. If that acts as resistance, okay, that's resistance, but that doesn't mean that you have a sell signal in here. The sell signal comes if you were to get a close below 3440.55. Now that is on an intermediate term trend basis out here. Again, I don't know what's going to happen today, but I can tell you on the weekly basis right now, we're not seeing the actual uh, sell. We're seeing the potential. We did see a price relative strength divergent pattern. Absolutely. Had a bear sash candle. That formed here the week of March 14th. A little doji, so a little bit of question mark out there on a weekly basis. But then you had the follow through the following week. Okay, price came down and it did what? It tested where the troops were at. It tested, it tr it tested where the actual line of support was. That's why understanding candlestick pattern is so important because it helps you to understand where the artillery is. It tells you where the uh, line is where the fall back position is in this case here if you take a look at the uh, bull sash candle that was what took place the week of february 7th out there that low was 34.18 guess what price came down there it tested that level and it held again if we go now take a look at the uh, daily chart for the ndx 100 what was it doing as it got back to that same level where the uh, cavalry was hanging out that's what created this little key reversal session out here on the daily chart that was a key reversal session that was the uh, day of april 15th out there and that was suggested at a minimum counter trend rally i think though perhaps more than that now What's another one of the keys for us to be paying attention to 
And what is a wild card that is out there? Well, look, one of those wild cards, without a doubt, is the uh, currency pair, the Euro-Japanese yen. If you ignore the Euro-Japanese yen, you're missing out on a big chunk of liquidity inside of the uh, marketplace out here. And the Euro-Japanese yen, let's go take a look at it and see what it is doing. It's had a real struggle here, a couple days, uh, four or five days of indecision. Yesterday was another one of those days of indecision out here, formed a little doji. We've seen the leaves falling off the uh, tree out here. But what it hasn't been able to do is have it has not been able to bust out its lows out here. Look, it busts out the uh, lows. It gets below 140.38, and then I'm willing to jump on the at least the short-term side of the uh, trade of uh, of being on the short side because then we've got because what I know is we've got this 0.786 Gartley sell pattern that is in place here. And what you and I know is a Gartley buy or sell pattern has five outcomes. And one of those outcomes is the dead cat bounce of 0.382 retracement. It's done that. What it hasn't done is hadn't been able to break through support and the next level on the elevator to be 139.10. Well, what do we know about consolidation patterns? Moves are going to be equal to or greater than the consolidation. And you can't argue that this is not in the consolidation pattern. So what does that actually set up for us if, in fact, this breaks to either direction? top side or bottom side. Well, to the low, remember, it's equal to or greater than the actual consolidation. If we go from the uh, Gartley A point down here on the February 4th uh, low all the way up to the high that came in out here on March the 7th, you'll see that it's more like the 0.786 retracement or lower that we're likely to see the Euro-Japanese yen fall to. So if it gets below 140.43, let's say you're short today, no problem. You're short today. What you really want to see is you want to see that Euro-Japanese yen Close below 140.38. If it goes down there and it tests that level, that's telling you it's not going to bust out the lows out there. And make sure you tighten stops. Make sure you take profits. You know, do whatever those things are. But remember, we've had a market that's gone up for seven days. We have a descending price channel that prices run into. We had a 0.786 retracement level. To expect some type of difficulty in clearing that hurdle out there because... You know, folks, the uh, NQ, which has been the weak link, has been really running a marathon here. It hasn't even had a day off from work. You know, the question is, are the bulls going to take the day off from work here uh, today? Again, trend-wise, we've covered daily, weekly, uh, monthly out there, and hope that gives you a pretty decent feel. Now, let's go switch over. Let's go see, talk about talk about trends and what's going on in the marketplace. Let's go take, like, gold and silver. When I was looking at them earlier here, I didn't have my live feed coming in. That made things fairly difficult. We have seen a reversal, no question about it, inside of uh, Goldilocks. Gold was threatening to break through the B point of an A, and it's got volume. So that's kind of interesting. So you got uh, the swing point from April the uh, 4th. That low is 1277, 133,000 contracts out there. And uh, today we've already done 152,000. Now, got 152,000 contract, was not able to bust out the low. You've got volume uh, down there. It says, okay, you could go back down and test the uh, 1268 area. But it's been a rejection on uh, price. Uh, you do have what looks like uh, what's forming here. Remember, the body of the candle is the essence of price. This is what's referred to as a morning star reversal pattern. That says then that the uh, low of this morning, right now 1268.40, should be a pretty decent area of support out there. And again, when we took a look at the uh, just simply Fibonacci retracement uh, levels out here, we could see that it was a, a 0.618 retracement off of the low from December. December 31st to the high that was put in here on March the 17th also was a 0.786 retracement of a cluster of candles right around the price level of about 1225 to 1238 uh, somewhere right around there that's your 0.786 retracement so you are seeing a nice reversal here inside of uh, Goldie uh, locks let me put this on a, a little shorter term chart let's go see where the volume so the volume spike coming to the upside big time out here uh, that uh, was uh, coming in at the uh, 9.30 to 10 o'clock uh, time frame. Uh, but at this stage here, what it has not been able to do is actually close its uh, little gap that it has. Let's take a look at uh, silver. Go see if silver's got the uh, same reversal uh, pattern out there. Silver right now trading up 19 cents. Yeah, it does. Uh, what it really needs to do, though, it needs to clear that December 31st swing point. Otherwise, it's just trading inside it, which is 1985. Silver can close above 1985. I might be a believer. 877-927-6648. We'll be right back, folks. Has the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. 
Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long Long term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light speed world of ever evolving high tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. We're told to follow our passion and everything else will fall into place. I hope that's what each of you are doing each and every day. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Masters Show at TFN.com, and my passion for technical analysis is what led me to the most fundamental discovery and pattern recognition, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator, market scanner and trading strategy, a set of tools that identify the momentum and power of the trend, the likes of which have never been seen before for every market and every time frame. Yes, folks, the trend is your friend, unless you're on the other side. New to technical analysis? This is the place to start. And experienced traders, take advantage of the trend like never before. Experience the power of the Rhodes Momentum Indicator each day, available to subscribers of my newsletter service, Mastering Probability. I guarantee your satisfaction for the next 30 days unconditionally, so there's no risk to you other than being on the wrong side of the trend. Mastering Probability, available on the homepage of TFNN.com. And folks, live with passion. Catch Basil Chapman as he uses his Chapman Wave methodology to call the markets. The Tiger Technician's Hour, next on TFNN. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's off 17, uh, flat in the S&P, uh, composites up uh, 3, Russell 2000, down uh, 4 points. You know what's cool about, uh, at least from my perspective, um, you know, I mean, some of us, uh, you know, some of us probably have favorite movies, and you probably see them over and over again. I do. I mean, I like watching uh, Rudy. I think that's a great movie. I love my cousin Vinny. I love Braveheart. I love uh, um, uh, the Samurai. Um, 
Top Gun, you know, just a number of movies that I like. And, you know, what, what's with what's up with that? We watch the same movie thinking that the ending is going to be any different. Now, the cool thing about the market is the ending is different. As we read the book of the market, as we read each page and each chapter, depending on the time frames that you're looking at, it uh, changes every day. I mean, how cool is that? We get to come back, take a look at something that we're passionate about. And what's what's always interesting, what's great about the market is that we have bulls and we have bears. We have somebody who sees one opportunity as a selling event, another opportunity as a uh, buying event out there. And to me, I, I just think it's a, it's cool, it's live, it's, uh, um, you know, and, and, and just case in point, got an email here that uh, came in from a listener, and I appreciate uh, both sides of the point, because the real key here, if we're going to help each other out, is to be able to take a look at both the bullish and the bearish side of each case. Now, by saying that, that is the whole reason why you use stops. That is the reason why when you take a trade, because this isn't about who knows who's going to be right or wrong. Who knows what's going to happen on the next page out here. The email says, you said on your show this morning, the bulls are taking the best punch that the bears can show. You should say the bulls were all giddy in the morning with Apple and Facebook and the NASDAQ opened up 70 points on the NASDAQ only to see a collapse and negative even with Apple up 7%. If ever there was a show of weakness in the market, there you have it. Topping is taking place and the big institutions are selling into strength and is plain to see with the big move down after the open. And you know, all those statements are absolutely correct. The question is, how is it that you're going to trade it? And I don't care which side of the trade it is that you take out there. One, you might take a look at the longer-term trends or just simply some other signals out there, but it doesn't matter to me. That's why we have bulls and we have bears. That is the most cool thing about the marketplace out here. I know that there's frustration out there by you listeners, by many listeners, because I get emails saying, how can you be bullish and, you know, Tom or David or Larry or Basil, whoever, whoever it might be, you know, they're on the opposite side of the trade. They're bearish about the marketplace. Folks, I hope that you listen in to the show. I hope you listen in to my show, at least, to get my honest opinion, to get my absolute honest opinion. I respect everyone that I work with, and I do hear what they're saying, and I try to take a look at what they're looking at and see how that factors into what it is that I'm looking at. But I tell you, I'm always going to give you my honest opinion Right or wrong, you see, it doesn't really matter. I know that it's the next chapter and the next page, that neither of us know what's going to take place. And the whole key to making money, the whole key to making money in this business is money management. We are not going to be right or wrong on trades. Make sure you use a system that has a positive expectancy. That's what the Rhodes Momentum Indicator System does. I mean, we're talking $3 a day. $3 a day, at least to get my viewpoint that's going to help you. It's going to stay help you stay in on the right side of the uh, trend out there. Uh, come on, on a, uh, if you've got a... $100,000 account has produced $95 in profits over the last uh, eight, nine months, uh, whatever that is, versus versus $3. We've got 50000 so it, it makes uh, it's $45 a day, in essence, versus $3. Three dollars a day. I mean, they, you know, it's not what it costs you to do it. It's what it doesn't. It's what it costs you to not pay attention to that. So I'm here. I will always. I promise to you. I will always give you my honest input. And so I do appreciate the email that came in here. What I will say is, hey, go look at the VIX index. It's a liquidity gauge as well. And that liquidity gauge, folks, right now it's below the 50-day exponential moving average. The market has liquidity. That's how a market goes up on light volume. When the Euro Japanese yen is going up, that carry trade, that's what helps the market go up on light volume as well. So, folks, thanks so much for being here on Terrific Thursday. Go have a great day. I look forward to seeing you bright and early tomorrow morning. Take care. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Can 
cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. You're watching Tiger TV.